Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. Traffic is crazy. I'm checking my makeup for the million time using my pocket mirror because I would like my interview to go as perfect as could be. I want to impress the interviewer because Posh Magazine has always been my dream job. I applied as an intern, and I know hundreds of ladies my age would kill for the chance that I have right now. Oh, the green lights are finally on. Great. I will make it just in time. But then, a motorcycle just caught my lane. I was able to hit the brake, but I bumped my head in the steering wheel. And that's gonna leave a mark. I opened the car window so I could yell at the motorcycle guy. But just like the perfect special effects in movies, the wind blew so hard. The papers, including my resume, flew out of my car. Without second thoughts, I jumped out of the car to get the papers that were flying away. Then I absentmindedly crossed lanes. I was almost hit by not just one but countless cars. Then my phone rang. Great! It's the interviewer trying to know where I am and if I am coming for my scheduled interview. As I took out my mobile phone from my back to answer the call, a random guy ran over my direction and quickly snatched my phone. Instinctively, I ran towards his direction. Hey, give that back to me! I didn't care about the cost of my phone. I just care about my contacts. I'm still thinking about my interview. This is my only priority at the moment. Then just like a hero, the motorcycle guy chased the snatcher and he was able to catch him. The police were able to take care of the snatcher, then the motorcycle guy took the pleasure of giving me back my phone. Hi Miss Beautiful, here's your precious phone. I want to say thank you but I'm pissed at him so I just stormed out like a kid throwing tantrums. I just heard him yell, you're welcome. I went back to my car and rushed to the building where the Posh Magazine office was located. My perfect outfit is now ruined. My white dress and my shoes caught dirt due to my encounter earlier. My hair in a bun got loosened up. My mascara got smudged. I'm pretty sure my lipstick is messed up as well. I would love to go to the ladies room but there is no time. People are staring at me, and they must think that I'm such a shameless person for applying here looking like this. I chatted with the manager, and I explained what happened to me. Nothing can stop me from being a part of this company. I told them that if it means that I have to do coffee runs and countless errands every day, it would be my pleasure to do it. They loved my spirit, and they hired me. They gave me a tour of the office. I saw where the signature clothes are kept. I also saw the studio where the photo shoots happen. Oh my god, this is like a dream. The manager asked me to take down notes because I will be the one to give the tour to visitors next time. I was hoping to meet the president of the company because I heard she's like Miranda from The Devil Wears Prada. I'm challenging myself to woo her just like what Anne Hathaway did. But I reminded myself that my life is not a movie. A perfect example would be just like what happened to me earlier. I came so prepared, but I still almost lost my chance for this job because of one unfortunate event. I parked my car in the basement of the building and I needed to rush somewhere because I have a date. I needed to change my clothes and to freshen up because I don't look exactly my best right now. Then my phone rang. It was Mark. It's our first date, and maybe he's just trying to check how I am and if the interview went well. But then I got sad when he said that he needed to cancel our date because he has some kind of work emergency. I had no choice but to put on a smile and pretend it was alright. No, it's fine, don't worry about me. Next time, maybe. I just went out of the building and went to the nearby coffee shop. I treated myself because I deserve a me time with a nice cup of coffee. It is the last day where I could have the luxury of time. Just a couple of minutes after settling in, my phone rang. I answered it immediately. It's the manager. Hello? She asked if I'm still nearby because they would need me to start today. 
They're asking me to get the measurements of a certain male model that will do a photo shoot the day after tomorrow. I asked the barista to make my cup to go because it would be such a shame to waste a much needed cup of coffee. I rushed to the office and I was there in no time. I started immediately and acted like a pro. I did not let the manager notice that I have zero idea of what I'm doing. I don't know how to measure a body, but I checked a few videos online. Good thing I'm a quick learner. There are lots of guys in the room, and it's like raining muscles in here. This must be heaven for most girls. Well, I do enjoy the view, but I constantly reminded myself that I'm here to work and I will not do anything to ruin this opportunity, so I needed to focus. I was able to get the measurements of the male models. It was not that hard, and I really got to enjoy brushing my skin to their biceps. Okay, Kulina, focus. The manager entered the room and asked if I was done. I gave her the list of measurements and I saw in her eyes that she was impressed. But when I asked her for my next task, she said, Dear, you're not done yet. I'm confused. Mr. Pierre is arriving soon. He's the most popular ramp model in the industry. And my heart just pounded. I got so excited. I will have the honor of being the one to get the measurements of the male supermodel of the company, and I think that is such a big deal. Oh, there he is. When I saw him, my jaw dropped. He was the motorcycle guy. He greeted the manager and vice versa, and then he greeted me. Hey, it's you. The manager asked if we knew each other. Before I could answer, he saved me the trouble. He told her what happened earlier, and she complimented him for what he has done. You're such a hero. The manager left us alone, so I already took his measurements, which lasted for less than 10 minutes. I couldn't help but notice that he's got this wicked grin on his face the whole time. I just smirked at him. Is that really how you'd like to thank me? By frowning at me? I forced a smile, and I know I looked silly. Hey, if you cannot say thank you, just be nice, he said. I walked away from him because, to be honest, I don't know how to deal with him. I am pissed at him because I almost didn't make it. But what are the chances that my first assignment will involve him? Odd, I know. If you would not stop walking away, I will tell the manager that you wrote to me. No more second thoughts, I stopped walking. I felt like he was walking near my direction. He talked to me. Are you really not gonna thank me? Is that what you want? Then thanks, I said sarcastically. Come on, you need to make it up to me, or else I'll tell your manager. I cut him off before he could say anything else. Enough, what do you want? He just laughed at me then said, I want you to have a cup of coffee with me. Um, no thanks, I raised my cup and said, see, I'm having one right now. He conceded and asked me for dinner instead. I know he's the type of guy who will not stop unless he gets what he wants, which is time to spend with me. I went home, took a bath, dressed up, put on light makeup. I don't want to be overdressed. He might think that I'm making too much effort for him. He picked me up at exactly 7 p.m., and we had dinner at a nice steakhouse. Well, he seemed different than our first encounter. He's actually a gentleman. A lot of people are staring at us because maybe my date looks so good. I feel so ordinary beside him. You look wonderful, he said. I just smiled because I felt like he was sincere about it. After the main course, he ordered some wine and we talked all night about our lives. His name is Elia Pierre. I've learned that he's been a model since he was 18. He is 22 now, I'm 21, not bad. I suddenly forgot about my frustrations with Mark. Good thing he's not my boyfriend yet. I realized that I have so many options, especially now that I'm working at Posh Magazine. How lucky am I that I got to date a model on my first day of work? 
I know this guy likes me. I can feel it. But I need to be careful because I don't want to get my heart broken. What if he's just bored and he's just collecting a jar of hearts? Anyway, I told him that this date is just a one-time thing and that he should just consider it as my way of saying thank you. But then as time passed, we spent a lot of moments together, especially during fashion shows when I assisted the models backstage. We always spent time together by having coffee or eating out after each event. But I told him that I can only promise friendship, nothing more, nothing less. He said that he's good with it as long as he can have me near him. One random moment, I asked him if he already met the president of the company. He did not answer right away. Yeah, I know her. She's a nice person. Really? That's not what I heard. He just laughed at me, but we instantly dropped the topic. Then that day came. I met the president, and I don't know, but she looks really familiar to me. A lot of people say we look exactly the same. I disagree because she's so beautiful. She doesn't look like she's almost 40. I wonder if she has kids because her waist is so tiny. She looks just like my age. While I was doing some paperwork, the manager called me and asked me to join them for the meeting regarding the fashion week in Paris. Okay, maybe they need someone to do the minutes. In the meeting, everybody is talking about their passports. I was asked, do you have a passport? We're going to Paris. Paris? What now? Wow, is this serious? I'm going to Paris with them? But is Elia one of the models who will come along? During the flight, I'm thinking if Elia would also be there. He mentioned he's been to Paris before, so I would ask him to give me a tour. I was on the same flight with the manager and the president. The president surprisingly asked me to be her personal assistant for the event, which made others raise their eyebrows. This beautiful lady made me schedule a spa day and she asked me to join her. While we were having tea, she asked me about my family. I told her that my parents died in a plane crash. I also told her that I never had a good relationship with my mother because all my life I felt like she didn't like me. She never even said that she loves me. Yep, not even once. I'm so sorry, dear, she said. What she told me next was a complete surprise. I'm going to tell you a secret because I know I could trust you. I waited for her next words. I have a daughter. I had her when I was 18. I think she might be your age by now. That is why I have a good feeling about you. If she's alive and well, I hope she grew up to be as pretty and smart as you are. I got water in my eyes. I never heard those words from my mom. The president and I dressed up after a hot steam session and she asked me if I would love to go shopping with her. Who would say no to that? She bought me a lot of shoes and bags. She asked me to change my clothes into signature ones. We rented a car and strolled around the city. It was so much fun. How I wish I had a moment like this with my own mother. I cannot wait to talk to Elia about this. He might not believe the moment I'm having right now with a lady. We finally reached the hotel and we went straight to our rooms. See you later, she said. I received Elias' text message. He said that he's not included on the list of the male models that are in Paris, and he also said that he would tell me something important when I arrive back home. And he sounded so serious and strange. Then I noticed that I still have the lady president's purse with me. I offered to hold it so she could enjoy her shopping. I was on my way to the room when I saw Elia. I thought he was not in Paris. I almost called out his name, but I decided to stay quiet and just spied on him. I followed him to check where he was going. Why is he hiding from me? If he is here with another woman, then why is he keeping it a secret from me? I knew it. He's just making me a fool. But then again, why am I jealous? I'm the one who only wants friendship. I followed him still.
I headed the corner to check which room he was going to enter. And boy was I shocked. He entered the room where the lady president was. Are they having an affair? But I heard the lady is not married, so it's not exactly an affair. Also, Elia is technically single. I'm the one who said we're just friends. So why am I acting like a girlfriend that's been cheated on? I'm torn if I have to return the purse right now. But I heard her phone ringing from her purse, so I had no choice but to knock on her door and return the purse. She opened the door, and I heard someone taking a shower. It is confirmed. I am heartbroken. I don't know what came to me. Back to my hotel room, I drafted my resignation letter right away. Then I flew back home using my own money for the ticket. I couldn't stand being there for another day. I know I wasted a good chance, but I need to pull myself together. How can fate be so cruel to me? Is that the universe telling me to realize that I have fallen for Elia? But I guess it's too late. I never should have entertained him in the first place. A few days have passed by. I cried my eyes out and I ate ice cream at my apartment. I live alone, so I am free to do whatever in my own space. Then one night, the doorbell rang. I thought it was the pizza guy, but I was surprised to see the lady president. I am hesitant to let her in because my place is such a mess, but she insisted. When she got inside, I was surprised when she gave me a hug. Then she said, I knew it. It was you. I'm so glad I found you. Then she saw the picture of my dad placed beside a vase in the receiving area. He's your father, right? Um, yeah. He's the love of my life. She replied. How could this be? I don't understand what's going on anymore. But she explained everything. She said that ever since she got money, she started looking for me, but luck was never on her side. She got an idea of hiring a private investigator so things would be faster. The first private investigator she hired just scammed her so she decided to do everything on her own. She almost gave up about finding me, but then Elia came to the rescue. Elia is just working undercover as a model. He is a private investigator. He's got a strong theory that I'm the missing child of the lady president, but he doesn't have the document to prove it yet.